The blessing and the precious love of our Lord is with us, heart dwellers. It truly is. A beautiful message tonight. (laughs) A beautiful message tonight. And if you hear someone snoring in the background, that's my kitty, Judah, who looks like the mountain lion. He likes to snore. (laughs) I just couldn't put him to bed. He wanted to go to sleep in the studio with us. So I uh, waited on the Lord after worship, and I've really missed him lately because I've been wanting to be real faithful in getting the message out, and the Lord just hasn't been manifesting in that really sweet way of dancing with me in a real uh, sensible way that I could see in the Spirit. He hasn't been doing that, and I really miss him, and I really miss that, but I know that when he hides from me that way, that those graces are still going to souls, other souls that need to see him. I know that he uses that as a suffering, as a Simon's cross, so to speak. So I'm trying to be patient about it, but I just started crying tonight because I missed him so much. Anyway, as I was waiting, I heard the word wonderful. Oh, two or three times repeated, wonderful. Wonderful. And then he began, he said, This is about how wonderful you and all my devoted brides are. You are simply wonderful. Like the song says, Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Reflecting the Great I Am. You all are fathers and mothers to the needy as well. All of those wonderful qualities that Terry sings about, are manifested in my brides in different measures. When you spend time with someone, thinking about them, living with them, you become just like them. That's why I said, wonderful. The qualities of my brides reflect who is inhabiting their house, their tent. Indeed, I am. And as a result, each of you star-studded gems reflect me in different ways according to your callings. Isn't that wonderful? To me it is. Out there in the great sea of humanity there are lights. A few here, a few there. They're separated by great distances, sometimes even in tiny clusters where they support one another like you do here. But as I look out over humanity, I see mostly darkness. Those who are still, the walking dead, spiritually. Oh, so many, too numerous to count. And I long to find the lights. Those who are longing to be lights, that I might inhabit them fully and be a blessing to all around. That's why I say, wonderful. That's why I sing over you, even as it is written. The Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save, and he will rejoice over you with joy. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That's Zephaniah 3.17. Yes, Lord, so many times I hear you singing the song I'm singing, except you're singing it back to me, and I dare not believe such things about myself. Why not? I'm believing them. I'm singing them over you because of the progress you have made in yielding to me. I do rejoice over you in singing, Claire. Please don't doubt me. I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, doubt blocks so many wonderful things that I want to convey to my bride. Trying to keep the wraps on humility is really futile. Pride always finds a way no matter how vigilant the soul. You needn't worry too much about humbling yourself until you see something trying to overtake you. I genuinely liked it when you sang songs from my perspective. I love those songs. How you've conveyed my tenderness to others. Yes, they are very, very special to me. Ouch, Lord, that's a sore spot right now. I know. And I got real silent. My heart began to ache and 
tears began to well up in my eyes, all because I really miss singing and music. And he was, of course, reading my heart. Claire, it's not time yet, he whispered. But I promise you, your time will come. I began crying. I miss music so much. It's funny, I envisioned a lifestyle living in the remote mountains with a small, modest little studio and dwelling overlooking the canyon, leading a life of prayer, writing songs, hiking the ridges and lush valleys with ferns. Yes, I really do have a dream, although I thought I might be exempt from the dreams because I do love what I'm doing right now on YouTube. But I guess I was fooling myself. There's still other things in my heart yet to be realized. Oh, yes, my love, I know your dreams, and you know the author. Nothing you muse upon is strictly yours. We are too close. I have put those dreams in your heart for later days. They still have their time. And the rapture has no influence upon those dreams at all. So put that thought away, all of you, my brides. You know that I'm already aware of how you're going to respond to this before you do, right? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you, put away your thoughts about the rapture interrupting your dreams, because I know all of you are thinking that. I answered the Lord, yes, I've gotten used to that almost. Sometimes I pretend to slip one by you, Lord, but I know better. <laughs> he answered, my tender spouse, you've seen that studio. Yes, you have a vision of it, Claire. It is the same one I have, just exactly, high on the rocks overlooking the wild canyon, right at the tree level with the birds landing outside on branches, chippering away, as you would say. All your favorite creatures outside your windows, elk and deer, lion and bear, all to be enjoyed in their native environment. Yes, my love, that vision is real. And if it tarries, wait for it. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come. It will not delay. That's Habakkuk 2.3. Lord, you know there are those who would criticize my use of Scripture here, when in fact you were referring to something else when it was written. What? Am I not allowed to repeat myself? Oh, you must tell them. I have permission from my Father in Heaven to repeat myself. As much as I like, by the way. <laughs> I laughed and said, what if they don't believe me? He said, well, then that's their great misfortune, because I quote that scripture to many of my people for encouragement. They're missing out on a faith builder. <laughs> You're funny, Lord. I'm also serious, and it is their great loss that I cannot speak to them on a personal level out of the scriptures. I have done that with all of my people throughout the ages. So how do I interpret? But know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Second Peter 1.20 He answered me by reading the rest of the scripture. Oh, it goes on to say, For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. And he answered and said, And see, I'm speaking this to you personally. It's fresh from me. As I said, I have permission to repeat myself. <laughs> I have to giggle. Oh, Claire, I'm so tired of the boxes men put me in. That is why I'm against men's religions and the way it's manipulated by opinion. And that opinion is usually protecting some kind of self-interest. It always ends up being a box canyon, a dead end. But when I return, I will restore the faith to its pure state and manipulation will not be tolerated. I'm afraid you'll have to wait till then to have some peace and quiet from your dissenters. <laughs> It'll be worth it, Lord. But until then, I want you to trust me, Claire. 
Though that little piece of heaven tarries, I have it in my heart to build it for you. Well, getting back to what I was saying, my brides, I'm sorry, Judah is snoring so loud. <laughs> Judah, psst, quit it. Well, getting back to what I was saying, my brides, I'm singing over you, if you will have it. Yes, tenderly and jubilantly, I sing over you. In this dark sea of humanity, you are my lights set upon a hill. While the rest of the world rejoices in the material possessions they can acquire, you rejoice in acquiring me. Do you know just how wonderful that makes me feel? My dear ones, imagine overlooking a valley filled with dwellings, and in the whole valley there's not one light, not one fire. All is absolute darkness. Imagine walking through that valley and looking in each tent and house and seeing only darkness. And as you continue to walk, your heart begins to ache for the light. But again, house after house after house, nothing but darkness. Then you come to a little shack, and there inside is one person reading my word by candlelight and pondering to himself, how wonderful is his God. So when I finally find him, what do you suppose I will do? Go in and dine with him? Exactly. I will joyfully knock on that door and inquire if I might come in. And he will joyfully respond. I've been waiting for you, Lord. But then imagine, there are some studying by the light of the lamp. I call to them. I'm so happy to find you studying my word and thanking me for what I've done for you. Can we talk? Can I sing over you? Can I dance with you? It's in the scriptures. And they scowl and say, God doesn't do those things with men. In the name of Jesus, be gone, you familiar spirit. And then slam the door in my face. Yet I have said in Zephaniah 3.17, I rejoice over you, which literally means to dance, skip, leap, and spin around in joy. I dance with shouts of joy over you. Claire, can you imagine how I feel when I'm turned away? And what's worse yet is that this teaching goes out from this mistaken soul and hinders others from being free with me. And those who defend my right to do these things are persecuted as you are. So you see, when I find a soul who is not only studying my word and inviting me in to celebrate, oh, it is wonderful, truly wonderful for me. I think I understand now what you're saying, Lord. That's all by saying to you, my love, continue on in what you're doing. You bring me great joy, and the brides on this channel that I have hearkened to my voice are nothing short of wonderful to me, because I am permitted to dwell more fully in them than those who have turned me away. <laughs>